Shalom, shalom. Baruch kabah b'shem, Yeshua. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Jesus. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the ending, who was, and is, and is to come. The Lord, God, Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Jesus, Yeshua, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I do believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one, according to John 14 and 1 John 5, verse 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. Today I wanted to talk about the wisdom of Solomon. And I find King Solomon's story to be very interesting as it pertains to wisdom uh, in the sense that God had given King Solomon probably the most wisdom that any person ever had except for Christ himself. And Christ even said to the Pharisees, a greater Solomon stands before you. Okay, that's paraphrasing. But King Solomon is known <clears throat> for his wisdom. And people from all around the world would come and observe his teachings, observe his wisdom, and be astonished. And that is to the glory of the Most High God of Israel. Amen. Now, if you're not familiar with the story of King David and King Solomon, King David was a shepherd boy who was chosen by God uh, to be the second king of Israel. Now, the first king uh, did not work out. <laughs> okay, not, not at all. Okay, and in the stead of uh, the first king, King David was anointed, pulled out of the shepherd's field, and into kingship. Amen. And of course, David is, is a foreshadow of Jesus himself, who is the warrior king, who is a good shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep. Amen. Now, David was beloved of the Father. He was a man after God's own heart. And because David was faithful all of his life, except for a, a few hiccups, uh, you might say, um, you know, God was faithful to David and, and blessed him and blessed his son Solomon as well. Okay. Now, I just wanted to read quickly this verse from Ecclesiastes in chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. And it says, And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is a vexation of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. So it, it is said that, you know, Solomon asked for wisdom from the Most High God so that he could lead the people of Israel. And God saw that this request was righteous and pure, and God gave him abundant wisdom. Now, unfortunately, Solomon was not always faithful to the Most High God. And actually, most of his life, uh, he lived in, in apostasy. Okay, he followed after the gods of his concubines. And I'll bring some scripture up here in a second. But what's really fascinating is that, you know, of course we know King, King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, the, King, the, the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? And these, these two books are, are pretty much known as the books of wisdom, more or less, okay? Now, the interesting thing is the Luciferians, the Freemasons, highly regard uh, King Solomon and Hiram and Hiram Abiff uh, 
because they believe that King Solomon was some sort of keeper of esoteric and forbidden knowledge, more or less. And that's probably because Solomon rebelled and, and sort of went into those, uh, I guess, pagan religions and, and had all of the wisdom and the riches of the pagans. Um, so, more or less, the, the Freemasons, the Luciferians, uh, used Solomon and Hiram, which is a king of, uh, of the Phoenicians at the time of Solomon, uh, for their Masonic rituals, for their Masonic doctrine, uh, which is not good. Okay, now, the, the Freemasons are Luciferians, and their rituals and their doctrines uh, are not from God. Okay, so I just wanted to read some scripture here just to show you what the Bible says concerning all of this. Now, this is the Blue Letter Bible, and I'm reading from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 9. All right, so this is talking about how King Solomon called upon the king of the Phoenicians, or the, the, the king of Tyre, which was Hiram, okay, King Hiram. And with the help of King Hiram, uh, King Solomon built the, the holy temple in Jerusalem, the first holy temple, and also a, a, I guess, the king's house as well. And he used it with the trees from uh, the Phoenicians. And he, like, he covered everything with gold. And it was this brilliant, uh, splendid uh, work of achievement uh, by the hands of the, uh, of the builders of, of, of Solomon. Okay, and now we of course know that, you know, God does not dwell in a temple, okay? Uh, he would just meet the people of Israel in that temple uh, through the high priest and so on and so forth, okay? And ultimately under the new covenant, the, the true temple is the body of the believers where Christ and his spirit dwells within us, okay? And we become the temple of the Most High. Now, let me just read this uh, portion here in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 10. And it says, And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. And it says, Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees and with gold, according to all his desire. That then King Solomon gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. Okay, so actually, Solomon, I'm not sure if this was under the direction of the Lord, probably not, <laughs> because that, that, uh, that land is promised to the seed of Israel. Uh, but he, more or less, he, he gave Hiram, the king of, of Tyre, Tyre or, or the Phoenicians, uh, all this land in Galilee, okay? But Hiram was not uh, very much pleased with that land. It says in 1 Kings 9, verse 12, and Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of, of gold. And this is the reason of the levy which the king Solomon raised for to build the house of the Lord and his own house and and Milo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazor, and Megiddo, and Gezer. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gezer, and burnt it with fire, and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city, and given it for a present unto his daughter Solomon's wife. Okay, so it just gives some history here. But we see that, you know, that Hiram of, of the king of Tyre, or the Phoenicians, helped build... Uh, with Solomon, uh, the first holy temple in Jerusalem. And the Luciferians, the Freemasons, also regard uh, Hiram Abiff, okay? And uh, according to 1 Kings 5, verses 1 through 6, it says that uh, that King, King Tyrus sent his servant, or I, I'm sorry, actually, I'm reading the wrong verse here 
we see that in the Bible, in 1 Kings 7, verses 13 and 14, that King Solomon uh, sent for Hiram, a, a different Hiram, who is not the king, and he was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, okay? So, for some reason, this other Tyre is also regarded by the Freemasons, okay? For some reason, uh, Solomon chose this, uh, this widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, who is living in Tyre, uh, to be a workman uh, for the temple. And for this reason, the Freemasons uh, include this Hiram Abiff as, you know, one of the, their people of interest, okay? Now, let's take a look at some other passages in Scripture. Now, this is regarding the apostasy of King Solomon, okay, in 1 Kings 11, Verse 1, it says, But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. And Solomon clave unto these in love. Okay, so Solomon went after the women uh, of the uh, of the tribes that the Lord said, you know, don't do that, <laughs> okay? And it says in 1 Kings 11, verse 3, And he had 700 wives, speaking of Solomon, uh, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his hearts. So these uh, pagan wives, these concubines, turned away Solomon's heart uh, to other gods, the false gods of the pagans. And it says in 1 Kings 11, verse 4, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, and was the heart of David his, and was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Z the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abominations of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. And it talks all about all the other evil works that Solomon did. And later on it tells us that because Solomon did all of this, um, that the Lord was going to take the kingdom and uh, the, the the 12 tribes and more or less divide the tribes and take 10 tribes out of the hands of Solomon out of the hands uh, of the the son of Solomon okay so that that's why Israel was divided into the 10 tribes of the north and the two tribes of the south because king Solomon rebelled against most high god and, and did all this evil and apostasy Okay, and we of course know that um, there was only one tribe that was left to the son of Solomon, and that was the tribe of Judah, because it was promised unto King David that out of Judah would come forth, you know, this everlasting kingdom, and, and so on and so forth. And we also know that the, the upper ten tribes of Israel also rebelled. Uh, against the Most High God, and they are actually destroyed by the Assyrians and, and taken out of the land because of their abominations, which left only the southern two tribes, King of Judah, or, or the Kingdom of Judah and the tribe of, of Benjamin, uh, and they ultimately uh, transgressed the covenant as well and were taken into captivity with the Babylonians. Okay, that's where you have uh, Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego, and their captivity in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. And then we of course know that after that, you know, Ezra and Nehemiah were sent to rebuild Jerusalem and inhabit the land once again afterwards. And that was ultimately so that the Messiah could come forth out of Israel, okay, which is Christ, Yeshua. 
Jesus. Amen. Now, just to uh, just to read what it says here in First Kings concerning uh, the division of Israel, it says in First Kings eleven verse six, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Uh, and then it goes on to say. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burn incense and sacrifice unto their other gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Now, you could read in First Kings how the kingdom was given to uh, Jeroboam, uh, who was, uh, I think, in, I forget which tribe he was from, but he was to take ten kingdoms or, or ten tribes out of the uh, hand of Solomon's son Rehoboam okay but then we see that Jeroboam also rebelled against God and, and kept not the commandments and all of his seed uh, were were destroyed because of his abundance of sin and idolatry okay now it says here uh, notwithstanding in the days I will not do it for thy for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son, which was uh, Rehoboam. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely not good, but it appears as though uh, Solomon returned to the Lord uh, later in his life, uh, I think right around the time that he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, if I'm not mistaken. Now, in, in Ecclesiastes, it, it really shows, uh, I guess, Solomon's heart uh, towards, you know, perfecting, uh, per perfecting your wisdom through faith and obedience uh, to the Most High God. And, and in this book, let me read some portions of it. It uh, really has some insightful wisdom uh, concerning, you know, the, the vanity of the heathen, the vanity of the pagan nations, and how all of it is like grasping at the wind. Okay, you can't you can't catch the wind. It's like trying to catch the wind. Uh, you know, you you search after one desire here, one desire there, but none of it ever satisfies. It, it's vanity. Okay. Now it says here in Ecclesiastes one that Solomon was a. Uh, he was a preacher and was a king over Israel and Jerusalem. Okay, that was in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 12. And it says, And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sword travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. And I've seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. And I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and having God more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem, yet my heart had ex great experience of wisdom and knowledge. I gave my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increases sol sorrow. Okay? So, you know, you know that saying like, with great 
power comes great responsibility. Well, <laughs> with great wisdom comes great sadness, okay? Because there's a lot uh, that can be observed that, that is just saddening. And, and that's because sin has entered into the world and mankind uh, gives themselves over to the lust of their own heart and, and they commit vanity day after day and it's to their own destruction, okay? And I, I could, you know, speak for myself. When, when I began to have my eyes opened to the true nature of this world and the world system and the nature of reality, as the Lord began to open my eyes, I became very depressed and I became very grieved uh, with the state of the world with the state of things and it kind of took a while for me to shake out of that vexation of spirit um, and, and even to this day it's, it's depressing knowing that most people are on their way uh, to hell because they would rather serve vanity they would rather serve false gods and idols and, and you know their own pursuits rather than the most high god who, who has plans to prosper us and, and to help us. But vanity and, and idolatry only leads to destruction. Amen. Now, what's interesting, let's take a, a look at some more writing here. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, uh, it, you know, wisdom it is given to Solomon here and Solomon after having you know he was probably the wealthiest one of the wealthiest kings of Israel or, or maybe that ever existed I, I'm really not sure um, he, he wasn't just wealthy in, in riches but also wisdom he gives us some insight as to how all of this uh, you know pursuit of, of monetary value or riches earthly riches it is vanity it says here in ecclesiastes 5 verse 10 he that loveth silver sh shall not be satisfied with silver nor he that loveth abundance with increase this is also vanity when goods increase they are increased that eat them and what good is there to the owners thereof saying the beholdings of them with their eyes the sleep of the of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is so there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor for which he may carry away in his hand. So Solomon is saying, you know, all of this accumulation of wealth is for nothing. You have all this wealth and then you die naked and you can't carry any, any of it over to the next life. And, and Jesus even said that you know, it is almost impossible. It is very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I think that's because the all of the stuff, all of the riches uh, takes their time, takes their attention away from uh, the Lord's will and, and, and the work of the kingdom. Okay. Now, it says here, and this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit, profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? Saying, you know, he like the rich man accumulated all his wealth for no reason. Okay, it's all going to uh, be handed over to someone as soon as he dies. He's not going to enjoy all those riches. So what's the point? <laughs> okay, and, and even those riches that you have you know during your lifetime they're not really they're not really satisfying to the soul okay some of it 
you know, some of the luxuries might be satisfying, but is it really worth, you know, giving up your eternal soul just for a little bit of luxury here in this life? No, I, I don't think so. Now, we also know that the Egyptians uh, believe that the pharaohs could take their wealth and their riches and maybe even the everyday people also could take their wealth into the afterlife, okay? But here Solomon is saying that's not true, okay? You know, as you go into your mother's womb naked or come out of the womb naked, so shall you leave this earth naked and with nothing, okay? Now, it says, Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for it is his portion. So out of all the wisdom and, and, and the mysteries and, and the great riches that King Solomon had, he's saying that it's good to just, you know, eat the fruit of your labors. Like literally... <laughs> You know, eating eating food off of your own land, okay, enjoying the things that you've created, uh, things like that. I mean, that's really what's satisfying. And, you know, God has given us the, the fruit of our own labors in, in the sense that he gives us, you know, materials. He gives us time and, and strength to build for ourselves a, a, a home and, and maybe a garden and and children and and all these things are, are good to enjoy uh you know as you labor uh towards them okay but you know when christ came he said labor not for the things that perish but lay up for yourself riches in heaven which rust cannot corrupt and which moth cannot eat so christ is saying yeah it's good to enjoy the fruits of your own labor but don't, in, you know, it's more, even more important to labor for eternal rewards that are in heaven. Amen. And, and that is through following Christ and being led by his spirit according to his will and purposes. That's how you get rewards for the kingdom, by following the commandments of Christ. Now it says here, Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth and hath given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. For he shall not much remember the days of his life because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. Now, the conclusion of the book of Ecclesiastes is really interesting because... Solomon tells us <laughs> at the end of his life that the the duty of man isn't to you know go after all these false gods and to try to create all these splendid and beautiful things but the duty of man it says here let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, so if you want to read more about this, you can of course read the whole book of Proverbs and the whole book of Ecclesiastes for, you know, for more insight. But, you know, Solomon is saying that the whole duty of man is to serve the Lord uh, to fear God, to keep his commandments, because everything will be brought to justice at the end of our life. We will, you know, the Bible says we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for everything that we did, whether it be for good or for evil, okay? That's even speaking to those who are saved in Christ. We will still be held accountable for what we did, whether it be good or or evil okay so be wise and serve god with fear and trembling and reverence knowing that he will judge everything that we have done and and all of our work in in which 
he has given us talents uh, to perform uh, these works. You know, have we hid our talents or are we using our talents uh, to do uh, good things for the kingdom? Amen. Anyhow, I pray this was a blessing. Uh, let us all seek the, the will of the Lord according to scripture and, and let us pray to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I hope to see you all in, in heaven very soon. And shalom until next time. Amen.